we have this. You see that? Level in the middle. Oh Jesus. What do we have here? So just as I thought it couldn't get any worse, I did another one. I did another uh, I did another effort. Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. My name's Calvin, also known as Arquan Welding. And in this week's video, we have this. You see that? Level in the middle. And then we move along, flange welded. Oh Jesus. What do we have here? So, yes. I must have forgot to level the flange off the second orientation before welding. And yes, I have an alteration to fix. There's two ways of repairing this. Cutting the butt weld replacing the whole thing or which i may regret this decision later when it comes to the amount of effort involved cutting on the back side of this flange turning this flange from a slip-on flange into a plate flange and then burning through the front of the chop once it's done which will burn out the weld at the back clean it up and reflange it because there is no way you can repair this the reason why I'm gonna chop on the back right here rather than on the back of the weld, if you go through the weld, you'll be left with nowhere to hang the new flange on. So that's why I need to um, cut enough, clean enough so the new flange can sit on it. And yes, you would not want to grind out the whole of the flange. So it's a lot of effort to cut in the, on the inside and then cut on the outside. So. If any of you have any other ways of, of, of cutting off a flange and, and re-flanging it, let me know. But this here is the way I know and mentally I can get on board with because doing anything else, I am not prepared for it. First thing on a Monday morning, so wish me luck. Guys, stay tuned until the end of the video because this mistake happened on the Monday morning and then the very next day I made a second mistake but I wanted to try a different method of preparing it so yeah for the sake of the video I tried burning it out and my mind was blown I did not I honestly did not know that burning out the flange would actually work I must have had a bad experience of doing it when I was a young welder and I've just never attempted to do it again so there's two different methods. This method I'm doing that and burning it out. Whichever one you find more better for yourself is the method to use. So that took 13 minutes to cut off. 13 minutes to cut that off. Now I have saved parts of, now I've saved enough of the pipe to reflange it. And I need to just clean up this little bit here like I said before if I burn through this direction here the chances are it will the, it will gouge into the pipe so I'm gonna burn through this direction and then when it cuts through the weld it's gonna shoot upwards rather than down into the pipe I could grind it but I think that's gonna take way more time than it needs to so um, yeah, like I said, this is this is the method that I've found to be the most effective right now. And you can see how much material I have left to stick the new flange on. So if I was to cut through the pipe here, I would have almost no material left to, to stick the new flange on. So I quickly want to address some things before you know I get I get them down in the comments. The techniques that I use they may be different to what you use, and and that's basically because every every workplace is almost in a a cocoon when it comes to techniques that they do. So unless new people come and bring in different techniques, or you see on the internet, you 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 stick with what you've learned. And for me, with the equipment that we've got 
burning things out and doing it this way here is just like it's, it's what everyone does so yes i would love to hear new ways of doing it but bear in mind we don't have a plasma cutter we don't have any arc gouging we've just got a nine inch grinder and oxyacetylene in our bays so i'm kind of stuck with a certain technique because of the equipment that i have it is not pretty i was more cautious than i needed to be but now i just have to clean it all up but it definitely is not pretty And now we are done. It is looking clean. A lot more grinding than I wanted, but as you can see, the pipe is in perfect condition. You would never have known that there was a flange on it, apart from this shockingly wonky cut. Now there's a way of flanging it by compass. There's a way of flanging it and dealing with this wonky cut. So usually you would have had the 90 horizontally and I can do the bolt holes and then do this side here. But because the chop is so bad, you can see um, the chop is so bad. If you was to have like a straight edge coming off of this chop to measure, if you was to have a straight edge coming off of this chop here to measure how far this flange is from that pipe there, because of because of this over because of this gap is about three mil three two or three mil over this is eight inch pipe so three mil over eight inch so another eight inch is six mil another eight inch is nine mil so the measurement is going to be completely useless for it's going to be completely useless for you to use so what i do i do it down here like this and then i can use my level and i basically kick the level out ever so slightly so i'm measuring from the top point and whatever the bo bottom point is i'm ignoring i will get that one when i'm welding so the measurement comes from the topmost point going straight down to that flange there and then i'll be able to know exactly how far this flange sticks out to get the right measurement all of the pipe work that i do has a three mil tolerance so that's why i'm paying special attention to make sure that the center to face measurement is perfect 1520 which means the flange needs to hang out 25 mil hanging the flange is quite simple what i'm going to do it's on a slide that's because uh, if you were to sit the flange straight on the pipe there'll be no gap on top big gap at the bottom we don't want that we want an even gap all the way around so the flange being on the slot opens up a gap at the top by attaching it at the top and then pulling it out you save that gap at the top and it equals out the gap either side so it's a little bit better um i've got i've got the level point is i've got this flange basically level bolt holes wise and then I'm going to check this level down here when I'm pulling it out and this level here. So three fingers is all you need. Two at the bottom to grab the flange, your thumb touches on the pipe and then you pull it out and then you guide it while, while the tacks feel um, malleable. Before it gets too, too um, solid, you, you try to move it as much as you can. So what you're going to see, I'm going to tack directly in the middle perfectly in the middle of these two bolt holes. If you, if you stray side to side, by the time you flip it 90 degrees to level it off the other orientation, instead of the, instead of the flanges moving nicely, they twist ever so slightly and it changes the bolt hole pattern. So make sure you, you try your hardest to make sure that your two tacks are exactly parallel to each other, are exactly opposite each other. I don't know the word for that. 
can always suggest tacking with a mask on, but because I'm talking to you, I can't. What I am going to do is protect my face with the extractor. So the fumes will get sucked up before they go to my lungs, and um, this should block a lot of the UV light. Check in, making sure everything's good. Bolt holes. One thing I forgot to do, normally when I uh, do the bolt holes, on a piece like this, I would have got it roughly level and then checked the length of it to make sure the center of the face measurements are good before doing the second tap. But because I'm doing the video, I get carried away sometimes and I don't always remember everything. One, five, four. Oh, perfect. All right, good, I'm happy. Sweet. 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 It is sorted. So I have everything touching the line. So this should be level to the line on the right. Sweet as, I don't do the middle. It, doing the middle, you're, you're doing a lot of guessing where the middle exactly is. So I just make things touch the line and then that way there, you can't go wrong. So as you can see, the flange is sticking out quite a decent amount. So if I was to have chopped it any other way, I would not have had um, enough pipe for the flange to sit on. So yeah anything more than this the company i work for don't quite like it they um reject the pipe normally we have it sitting on 15 mil so yeah normally it will be on 15 mil so how much is it 25 extra 10 mil not too bad and the outs the back side of the flange nice and clean Don't go anywhere guys, I'm welding up this pipe here, but you watch within a couple of seconds you're about to see another F up. But with that being said, hit the subscribe button people, show show me some support, show me some love. Every bit of, every video that I do for you lot like, comes from my heart, I love to share this content with you lot. So if you enjoy this, even a little bit, if this gave you some value, return the favor hit the subscribe button it goes a long way it goes further for me hitting the subscribe button than it goes for you by touching it does that make sense so yes enjoy the rest of the video though i'm about to show you my big mistake or my second big mistake so just as i thought it couldn't get any worse i did another one i did another uh, i did another effort this guy here is a bit of 10 inch shed 40 so it's thick and yeah so this flange here on the line on the right moving up on the line on the right coming to this flange here on the line on the left how did i do this i couldn't tell you what i do know is when i was leveling these off my levels were really hot with uh, i left them on a hot flange and maybe that made the bubbles a lot smaller uh, i don't know how it affects it but i know heat isn't good for your bubbles but i did another another mistake i'm not about to cut through this like i did the last one i'm gonna try a new method this time here i'm gonna burn it and see how it comes out being burnt this can be a direct comparison on the last video or this can be a direct comparison on the one I made in the start of this video, just to see which one's better. Some days are good, some days are bad, and this is just one of them bad days. There's nothing I could have done about this other than chopping it off. The QA guys, they done their job, but it's annoying because the bubble, the, the level was still in the bubble, you know. But what caught me off guard, so when I fabricated this and I checked the overall measurement, it was fine. Before I welded it, it was fine. But that's because I checked it in the orientation where the flanges were both pointing outwards to make the length 
come up to the right face to face measurement but they 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 checked it the opposite way round where the flanges were pointing into each other so the flanges were it was 20 mil too short which is why they caught it and then through further investigation okay look the bubbles are completely out so yeah nothing i could have done i pr i probably forgot to tack it with these with with these pipes there's so much that you're doing and so much possibilities of it going wrong that something as simple as when you flip it 90 degrees and you don't remember that you've not tacked it and you've started to weld just pulls it out away. all right now now i can call it quits Sorted. Look at the aftermath. So personally, I I found this way a lot more easy, I believe it or not. Maybe the last time I burned it off, I had such bad success with it, I kind of swore it off, but that was kind of easy. A, lo a lot faster than cutting it before. I only had a handful of gouges in the material, which was, um, yeah, it weren't bad at all. I think I remembered why I didn't like doing this is because you get a lot of this stuff falling in your neck and around your mask burning you so I didn't like that but it's sorted I'm gonna get the QA guy to come and check it and hopefully it will be happy